I'm getting ready to start building a new pair of speakers. And uh, if you're familiar with what I've done so far on this channel, you'll know that I have a two channel system in my listening room. And so what you might be saying, why do you need another pair of speakers if it's a two channel system? Well, I can talk about that briefly before I get into the design. And I was experimenting down there. I got my main speakers um, forward, of course, but on my sidewalls, I have acoustic panels that absorb the first reflection from those speakers. Now, a lot of people think that in order to have a good sound stage and a good listening experience, you need those sidewall reflections to make it, um, you know, feel more lively, give spatial cues as to the size of the room or whatnot. And so that prompted me to try to replicate them by putting tweeters over there. And the tweeters were positioned so that they're the same distance from my listening position as the tweeter that's in my main speakers so that there's no phase cancellation. Uh, both sounds, um, I, the new tweeters are wired in parallel with the, the, with the existing ones. They reach my ear at the same time, so they add. They don't cancel. Unlike um, reflections, which do partially cancel because, you know, you're getting the direct sound from the speaker and the reflected sound arrives slightly later. And so you get a little bit of comb filtering there. So it would be a more pure representation of what a reflection from the sidewall would be. And I had that set up for months, actually, and was listening to it for months and really liked the effect, really liked how it worked. Now, it didn't, I can't say that it, it made my soundstage bigger, but what it did was it pulled me more into it. And it made, I don't know, it made the soundstage seem more real. Anyway, so when I redid my floor, which I'm going to make a video about soon, <laughs> I um, took away those tweeters and I haven't put them back since because I wanted to build these new speakers that will go there. Now, originally it was just going to use this, the tweeter and put it in a, in, a, in a board mounted at the right height and then I could position it the right distance away. But then I got to thinking, what if I add a mostly a mid-range driver to it? So I actually tested out that idea uh, briefly using a mid-range driver and the tweeter together. And I can say it was a huge improvement, but then I didn't really listen to it a whole lot because I quickly went back to the tweeter again because, what? well, one fell over and, and it kind of broke apart and I said, you know, I'm not really hearing too much with this, but I figured it'd be interesting to try it again with something that's a bit more appropriate. And that would be this one right here. The, the other um, mid-range I was using was a, a full range driver, a very cheap one, smaller. This one might do a better job. This also has a little bit more bass extension, although that's not what I'm looking for. The, this speaker project won't be about bass. You're not getting any bass from these speakers. In fact, I'm probably going to have to high pass them at around 100 hertz so that I'm not over driving this, this uh, small speaker here in free air. Okay, so I have this and this is the Vifa P13WH-10 and that's dash four as well for four ohms. Um, I've had these for nearly 20 years. I've used them in a couple projects over that time that are no longer with us, but I still have the drivers. And these are optimized for use in a car. Um, I don't know what's special about them that makes them good for a car, but I, knew, I do know that they sound pretty good open baffle. So that's that. And I should mention that the sensitivity on this is 90 decibels at uh, 2.83 volts. And for the tweeter, I have this one right here, which is the uh, ScanSpeak R2604 ring radiator, the cheaper one. They have a more expensive one, much more expensive one. Uh, these weren't cheap by any means. 
Don't get me wrong. But um, I think that they're going to do the trick. And they're well matched with this uh, here because this is 90.5 decibels, 4 ohms as well. So I'm going to need a crossover with this. I'm figuring that the crossover point should be around 3K, maybe a little bit higher, 3.5K. I'll have to see what components I have. I have a lot of crossover components, so I'll be making this with what I have. I did buy these especially for this, though, I have to say. I, like, I didn't have these for long. So Now, crossover, second order, um, crossover on both, of course, crossing at around 3,000 or 3,500, maybe even higher, depends. This one is good up to around 5K. Um, that's what it's uh, specced at. Now, as for the box, it won't be a box. It'll be an open baffle, as it says in the title. And I'm going to be using this <clears throat> big hunk of ash, eight quarter. Eight quarter means it's two inches thick. And I think it's around eight inches wide. Wider than eight inches. I'm looking at a finished baffle size of around eight inches wide and a little bit less than two inches thick depends on how much i can get out of this and around 24 inches long so i'll get the two baffles from this nearly 50 inch long piece and that was one of the things that i like i was thinking about how i could do this i have other pieces of lumber here that will work but i would have to laminate them and I was thinking that this is going to look a lot better if it's a solid looking one piece. Okay. And why ash? You say your other speakers are cherry and walnut. Why not, you know, cherry and walnut? Well, my equipment stand is ash and walnut. So I have this. I can use it for the project and it matches the equipment stand. You know, a lot of people think that matching is an important thing. I really don't. I like some symmetry, but I also like to have a little bit of a mismatch. And I think that this works for me, having these made from ash. Now, the most difficult part of this project is the base itself, which is um, kind of angled and it lifts the baffle. Like originally, I was going to make these f like from the floor up to the top 30 inch baffle. You know, the baffle will get down to the floor and there'll be a bracket that holds it at a four degree angle, tilting back. I came out here and I looked around <laughs> and the only one that I could find that would be appropriate for it was this one. I only have enough for one in here. So I changed my, my design to, ha to include that complicated base. But I think that the base, now when I compare it to the original design that I came up with, I think the base and the way that like the new design looks is much better, much cooler looking than the old one. Now, I'm going to be making the base mostly, I think, from plywood. I have to look through what I have here and I'll be painting it black, matte black. Okay, the other option is to make it from walnut, which matches the other uh, things that I use on my other speakers and the, equi uh, the equipment span, but I don't have enough walnut and besides the like the, the size of the pieces, it would be very expensive. Those bases would wind up being very expensive. Now, the trade-off, of course, is that it's expensive for my time, but, you know, I'm here working for nothing, so I can do that. I'm going to be starting this tomorrow. I've already uh, designed a very rudimentary crossover, second order, like I said, to work with these two drivers. I'll make a test baffle to put these in so I can run some measurements and see what I have. Not that anything's going to change other than the crossover. So this is a step that, um, you know, I'd normally do if I was building a, a pair of speakers before I commit. But I, I, I don't see myself going back here. But I'm going to take the extra step because I'm like I'm documenting it here. And it's something you should do when you're building a speaker is build a test box to try it out for us to make sure you don't have any issues, you know, and you're getting the response you're looking for. And from those measurements, I can decide whether I'm going to change the crossover point or make adjustments like that. Then the next step will be to start um, on the baffles by planing this down to the point where 
I'm getting the maximum thickness out of it and then cut it to width so I get the maximum width and the length. I'm guaranteed to get 24 inches for each baffle out of this. Um, and then I'll start building the bases and the bases will be made in three pieces. Uh, the rectangular or square piece that goes inside the baffle will be separate. The angled part that goes down will be separate and then the base itself will be separate as well. The crossover parts will go inside that base along with a couple of banana plugs on the back to plug it in. 